Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for the invitation to open up day two of the Quantum XLab Science and Technology Summit. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but as we all know from past several months, technology is providing a, a pretty good solution nonetheless. Quantum information science and the cutting edge technology that comes from it has been a consistent priority for the Trump administration from absolutely day one. In fact, QIS is one of the five pillars of what we call industries of the future, which is the top science and technology priority of this administration. Now, even before the National Quantum Initiative Act became law, QIS and quantum computing were included in the yearly R&D priorities memo that is issued jointly by OSTP and the Office of Management and Budget. And in 2018, OSTP gathered 13 different agencies to write the National Strategic Overview for Quantum Information Science. Now that document identifies strategic priorities for the nation, such as getting the science right, growing the workforce, engaging with industry, very important, investing in infrastructure, maintaining security, and also cooperating internationally. You know, all of those are extremely important. So following President Trump's signing of the National Quantum Initiative Act, OSTP set up the National Quantum Coordination Office. We now have about 15 different government agencies on the National Science and Technology Council's subcommittee for QIS. And we've seen some really, really great developments recently with the QIS centers launched by NSF and DOE all across the country, including one right there at Bookhaven National Laboratory led by Steve Gervin. Now, NIST has developed the Quantum Economic Development Consortium, or QEDC as it's called, to nurture emerging quantum industries. And OSTP, in collaboration with DOE, has established the NQI Advisory Committee, which is made up of industry, academic, and government leaders, and they will all aid the administration in further strengthening American leadership in quantum. The Department of Defense and the intelligence community, they also continue to invest in QIS R&D as well. As one example, the Air Force Research Laboratory launched the Innovare Center in Rome, New York. The purpose is to foster QIS projects at an open campus environment. So along with all these great accomplishments in QIS, OSTP is extremely proud to announce the National Q12 Partnership for Education. And I'll come back to that here in just a bit. Now this week, we're launching a website for the National Quantum Initiative called quantum.gov. And as quantum information science picks up speed and it adds value to national labs and industry, and for all of America, I'd like to touch briefly on three important topics. The first one is partnerships. The second one is workforce. And the third one that ties it all together is values. Now, this group knows better than most that we are making incredible progress and great leaps in quantum control with qubits for quantum computing and revolutionary approaches to networking and sensing using quantum mechanics. A couple of highlights in quantum are the new types of algorithms and computing power afforded by quantum technology. We're also seeing new types of sensors that can provide essential data. Now, as a meteorologist, I think of the improvements that we can make in weather forecasting, but also tracking our changes in environment or GPS and MRI systems. In my own particular area of research, we use Doppler weather radar data to initialize computational models that forecast individual storms. Quantum sensing could absolutely revolutionize atmospheric remote sensing of storms and also dramatically increase the lead time for hazardous weather warnings through something we call warn on forecast. That is, think of an, a warning of severe weather issued based upon not an observation, but rather a model forecast before the event even exists, rather than waiting as we do now for the event to already be present. Now, not surprisingly, that takes massive computing power, and quantum computing is really poised to deliver it. I'd like to call on all of you as innovators to accelerate this field through meaningful partnerships and training that will get more people involved and do it with the values that we can all be proud of as Americans. Partnerships with universities and national laboratories, partnerships with industry and academia, partnerships and coordinating across government agencies with all of you are extremely essential for advancing and accelerating progress. Talent, ideas, and infrastructure, those things don't all reside in one place. And partnerships are a wonderful tool for pulling all those resources and assets together, including all the diverse ideas from all around the country. So the public-private partnership model really positions us to utilize the very best available science and to have access to the very best technology. You know, great ideas and innovation, they come from places like Brookhaven National Lab, which is hosting the event today, along with universities and colleges across the country and startup companies and industry labs and large tech companies and nonprofits all together, they do their job. So it really behooves all of us to put our brains and resources together to work in partnership. Now, this meeting is also a great opportunity to strengthen and initiate the kinds of partnerships that leverage how we invest in fundamental discovery science and research. Partnerships can give students the opportunity to work in national labs, to build foundries and qubits, 
to allow access to all of that infrastructure for colleges and startup companies and also to make test beds for quantum networks. But most importantly, new applications and use cases can be accelerated if we get potential end users together with developers very early in the process of invention and innovation. Not at the end, but at the front end. We have listed partnerships as a very high priority cross-cutting activity in the yearly OMB OSTP R&D priorities memo for the last two years. And it's something OSTP has been leading on very, very strongly. So please use that as both a mandate to all of you, but also a support mechanism for being creative and establishing very, very bold partnerships. Next, let me turn to workforce. You know, time and again, I've heard from colleagues in quantum technology and science across the country that QIS, we need more people. Now, the quality of the work and the pace of development obviously relies heavily on dedicated scientists and engineers. So getting more people recruited and involved and educated and trained and also retrained, it's a vital component to the success of quantum science and technology. For quantum technologies, we need people from a broad range of disciplines, not just photonics, but also electrical engineers and computer science, mathematicians, all those kinds of folks, we need them. We need problem solvers for math and CS, subject matter experts in chemistry, material science, to connect the capabilities to the real world problems, the very, very hard problems, those challenges where quantum computing or quantum sensing can really make a huge difference. As I mentioned earlier, I want to come back to this Q12 education partnership that I mentioned earlier, uh, which involves OSTP, the National Science Foundation, and over a dozen industries. This partnership, which kicked off October 7th, will encourage and engage companies and educators to produce curricula and learning opportunities for K-12 students in quantum information science. Just think about that, K-12 students doing quantum information science. Now, each one of those partners is absolutely committed to make quantum computing resources freely available in the cloud Get that, to educate the next generation of quantum information scientists for years to come. It's really incredible when you think about it. And this partnership is committing over the next decade to continue working with America's educators to ensure a strong quantum learning environment. From providing classroom tools for hands-on learning to developing educational materials that support pathways to entire quantum careers. I invite you to visit the, visit the q12education.org website to learn more. It's really, really a very cool thing. And finally, I want to touch upon values, the values that fundamentally underpin America's leadership in research and innovation. Now, I'm really speaking about two sets of values. The first set is our American values. That includes the freedom to discover, to create, to found a company, the fact that we welcome all comers to the research enterprise, domestic and international. The second set of values that we hold dear as researchers, I include myself here, is honesty and openness and integrity, accountability to one another, accountability to taxpayers mutual respect, and so on. In America, these values, the researcher values and our American values, they nicely align, but that is not the case in some other countries. In fact, the integrity of our entire research enterprise is being threatened by some individuals and by some foreign governments. OSTP has been working very, very hard to protect our research assets and capabilities while also ensuring an appropriate degree of openness that is absolutely essential, I think you all agree, for making progress. So toward that end, in May of last year, OSTP established the National Science Technology Council's Joint Committee on the Research Environment, something we call JCOR. There are four independent subcommittees that are working in this environment. The first one is called Coordinating Administrative Research, uh, Administrative Requirements for Research, or CAR, aka Reducing Administrative Burden on Research. The second one is Rigor and Integrity in Research, which includes re reproducibility and replicability. The third one is Research Security that I just mentioned. And the fourth one is safe and inclusive research environments. All of these things are very, very important to our research ecosystem and also our values as a research enterprise nationally. QIS and the rapid progress that's being made in this field is absolutely something to celebrate. But on the other hand, as a QIS field grows, it's really important that we're able to, to attract people of every background, race, ethnicity, nationality, very, very broad diversity to make sure we have a diversity of input, a diversity of thought, diversity of ideas. Also, having a safe and inclusive research environment, one that is free from harassment and other kinds of things, will attract additional talent and build upon the transformative nature of quantum science. We also, of course, must operate with the highest degree of integrity. In addition, consider the science first approach in QIS, in QIS policy. You've heard about the science first approach. We need to balance the openness, which has led to our extraordinary research ecosystem in America. We have to balance that with protecting our valuable assets. That includes your ideas, the intellectual property you develop, and also reputations. You know, we all need to realize that QIS is a game-changing area. I think you all get that. But we also have to realize that some other nations will work very, very hard to steal our technology and our ideas because QIS is so valuable. 
OSTP is working very, very hard with others in the White House and also those internationally to help ensure that our research assets are in fact protected. This is how we can demonstrate not only to one another as scholars and researchers, but also to Americans more broadly and to the rest of the world, in fact, that our common values of honesty, transparency, and accountability are absolutely foundational to our research enterprise and that we will never, ever compromise on those. So how do we connect all of what we're doing, science, to society? We have to look for broader impacts in a number of ways. We have to balance innovation with disruptive technologies that, that tend to overturn previous paradigms. You know, this involves universities and industry and government and nonprofits all working together to protect the research enterprise. And lastly, to make the research enterprise as efficient as, and effective as possible, we need to leverage existing approaches, minimize the burden of administrative overhead, and nurture a culture of discovery and intellectual risk-taking, and make sure that all of our work is employing responsible conduct of research principles. These principles collectively are absolutely critical. There are shared values as scientists, and they will keep our research enterprise vigorous and honest and trusted and intellectually and culturally healthy for many years to come. It will also position us to keep leading the world in fields like quantum information science. Now, I think you all agree the world is a very different place than it was just a several months ago. And so this is an opportunity to move quickly and deliberately and to come back stronger than ever before. The Trump administration is working around the clock to address COVID-19. And I'm, I'm sure you're very well aware of that. Now, I want to thank all of you who are working on the front lines in laboratories and in industries and in universities, national labs in responding to the pandemic. I also want to encourage you not only to stay healthy and to sustain our R&D capacity, but to be alert and think smart about how we can reinvigorate our research enterprise, return to the laboratories and universities with a renewed sense of purpose. I call this coming back stronger, not going back to where we were, but going back to a very different, very special, much stronger place. You know, we learned many lessons in the outbreak. I want to see us take those lessons learned and use them to come back stronger than we were before. Your ideas and lessons learned from the field are extremely vital for adapting our nation's research enterprise to do just what I mentioned. I encourage all of you to share what's worked and to consider new disruptive approaches. If it, you tried it before and it didn't work, let's try it again. If it hasn't ever been thought of before, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. We have opportunities right now to take actions that will create a more robust and resilient R&D enterprise uh, going into the future. And I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Science and technology do three things. They inspire people. They inspire all of us. They unite us together to solve common problems, and they guide us towards solutions. You've not seen that anywhere better than the COVID-19 pandemic. Discoveries that we make in America improve the health, security, and prosperity of our great nation, and that is something we need to make sure and continue. With that, I wish you all the best for a productive discussion at the Quantum X uh, Lab event. I wish I could be there. I'm looking forward to hearing about the outcome. I want to especially thank the U.S. Department of Energy and Brookhaven National Laboratory for organizing and hosting this event. Thank you very much.